Got it. Okie dokie. So, how many of you, this is your first time taking a shift class? How many of you, it's your first time teaching a shift class? <laughs> <laughs> so, we will do this together and see where we get to. Um, the shift, uh, number one, the shift book is a great resource. It's one we've got upstairs, um, and it's, it's based on I think the last downturn because life was going great. You know, you could put a sign in the yard and it'd sell before you're back to the office. And then all of a sudden 2007 happened and a lot of people weren't prepared for it to be hard work. And they'd been living an extravagant life. I remember because I joined real estate in 2007, actually March 31st, 2007. So about this time of year, I remember going to the first team meetings at the company I was at and that we team meetings were different there. But we would have, you know, talk about what houses were getting ready, and then we'd go on tour. We'd go out and look at the houses, and all there's um, everybody was parked in the back parking lot, which is where Meridian Title is now. So that whole back parking lot was all the agents. And some car wash company came by. They did custom on-site car washing, so everybody's car is getting washed because there's just money flowing everywhere. And then you go on tour, and every house had a giant food bar set up because every title company is sponsoring stuff. And then the whole subprime mortgage thing happened. And everything trickled away. Suddenly, no more car washes, no more food from title companies, no more anything. And it got down to where you would have, you've heard Jim say this in some of the team meetings, your, your listings would have anniversaries with you. You would have them on the market over a year sometimes. There were, it was a total opposite of what we're seeing right now. Um, there were 2,000 listings available and buyers could just pick what they want because sellers had bought at a high spot and, um, and so it was just a total change of mindset on everything. And a ton of people did not make it through because they were still living as if, you know, the deals were coming like they were the, the last two years here. Um, and we're seeing a little bump right now of the spring market. So you're seeing a lot of people who think, oh, it's just back to normal, but it really isn't. Um, there's a change coming. And let's see, you all here are within a year of real estate, right? Or a month. <laughs> um, so you're actually in a good situation because if you learn from here what it's like, it makes it easy on down the road. You just assume everything's going to be a little bit more work and things like that. And then, so in other words, you're set up for a long-term haul because I got in this kind of market and it was actually perfect because as I was getting in and learning these kind of details, all the people who thought it was easy got out and they went and did other stuff. So it's a perfect situation. Okay, so let's see what the slides have. So there are six shift strategies. And so obviously you're class number two. Wednesday, Rachel teaches one of these and somebody else does the other. And then Jason, who's an incredible teacher, does five and six. So basically, these are the steps to make sure you make sure you're in a good situation to get through this all. Today, we're talking about remarging your business or expense management. Yeah, hold on, I got to get another slide up here where I can see it. And so we got a, a, an example person we're going to look at on what you need to do to get expenses in line. And the example they're going to use <laughs> is quite a bit unrealistic, I think. So, remarging your business. I got to find my page in here because I got to follow the ones we're going. When markets shift, the first change a business must make is re expense itself. Revenueing your way out of a shift is iffy at best. The big thing we look at as the market center is we've got to base our budget on the money we know is coming in. Not the money we hope is coming in or that might close, but things that we are definite on. And so that's kind of how you got to look at it on your own business, too. So there's three objectives on remarching your business. Like I said, this is not going to be a two hour class. We'll get to the basics and we'll do some of the example stuff. But you got to do three basic things as I jump to my page. Number one, we got to project your income based on your market, on what you have coming in. Um, what do we have in the pipeline for closings right now? I know uh, you probably don't have anything right. Larry, not yet because you're so new. Do we have anything under contract right now, guys? Zero? I have buyer's agreements. That's about it. Then nothing, nothing in the 30-day window. So this will be a little different because this is going to be assuming there's money coming in. Um, but it's the same idea. We've got to make sure we're financially available to get through things. Lexi, how about you? Do you all have some stuff coming? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've uh, got another listing. Um, we've got several uh, active buyers right now. Are your buyers having trouble getting stuff again, like last year? 
Uh, not like last year, but yes. Yes, having enough buying power to be able to compete with some of these cash offers or people that, that can waive, waive contingencies, yes. And then all the interest rates make it more fun too. Yes, we've seen a lot of um, people opting in to buy down the rate. So having strong oh, really? Yeah. And so sellers are doing that some? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so guys that are here, get creative. Don't just take, you know, that they don't qualify for a certain thing. Look at different ways to, to manage getting listings or, or offers going. Um, so step one is projecting your income. You'll, we're going to use a guy named Emilio for our sample here in a second. Then examine your expenses to identify areas to cut and then protect your margin with a realistic budget. Who in here lives off a budget right now? Sort of. <laughs> So if we don't have sales coming, is there income from somewhere else right now? So you all are what I call bivocational. It's not that you're real estate part-time, you have two full-time careers. And just look at it that way. That's how I started um, because it takes money to survive, especially right now with the cost of stuff. But what I would do, because I worked 40 to 60 hours with a music store and then I would do every hour I could with the real estate also, if somebody needed to see something and I was busy with my other job, I'm sorry, I have an appointment right now. Can I? Can we do it at four o'clock? The appointment may have been with the other job or it might've been out that night with my girls. But that's one thing I did to make it not sound like I'm you know, running from one job to another. I use the word appointment because they don't even know what's on your calendar, but just realize that there's, there's ways to work around that. Okay. Um, so, let me read through some of the stuff I'm supposed to say. So this, this is fun. The, the, Keller Williams lays it out so exact. There are things I'm supposed to say and ask you all to make sure we get to everything. So you may be thinking that if you just have more deals, you'll be okay. However, in a shifting market, finding more deals becomes a challenge. Revenuing your way out of a shift is going to take too much time. It may even be impossible in the short term. You need to act now. So what they want us to do is project our income based on our market. Until you know the potential income your business may bring in, you won't know how much expense to cut. We'll take a look at our pipeline of business for the next couple of months. And again, right now, we don't really have a pipeline of money coming in. So this is sort of theoretical stuff. Lexi obviously does because they have a team and they've they got to make sure they're taking care of everybody. But with nothing in the pipeline, step one is a little different. Um, we start with personal expenses, then move on to business expenses when cutting. Why do we? Why do they recommend cutting personal expenses first? Some of it's probably nonsense, you know. Stuff you don't need, you just want. I feel like I would agree. Advance those personal expenses don't bring in money. Business expenses. Money. That too. If we cut business expenses, we've got to think about: it. Are we cutting things that will bring more money in? And some of those things we got to have to make the business keep going. Mm -hmm. Which also reminds me, ALC meeting tomorrow might be talking about a different way to help with um, younger agents. So after tomorrow's meeting, there might be some resources available too. So come to the meeting if you want, or um, you'll get some details after that. Okay, um, protect your property with a realistic budget. Your budget will be your measuring stick to determine if you are sticking to your plan to reduce expenses and maximize your profit during the shift. The profit will always be made in the way you manage your money. When the market shifts, create a budget that leaves a comfortable margin of profit and puts you in a position to weather future reductions. We're going to jump for a second. I'm going to try and share something if I can get to it. ATL. Come on, Internet. Coaching education. Financial coaching. Financial survival in real estate. This is a class I've taught at the board a couple times. Let me see if this is the right one. Yeah, so this, I don't know what the AHW stands for. I don't know why I put that on there. But this is a way to kind of look at what expenses you're going to have each month. So you notice there's an input column here. There's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, all the way across. This is a way to look at what it's going to cost you each month to know what's going on. For example, I'm going to take this out for a second. If you put it in the input column, it automatically adds it all the way across. So we know your GSBR expenses are $45 a month. Your super is 15. E&O is what sadly went up this year on us. And technology went up. Networking group, 
That's not something most people in here have. We can get rid of that. Office rent. If you can do without an office, do it. So we're going to take that out. We're going to take this out. So right now, and I can share this thing with everybody. So the, this top color is fixed monthly business bills. So this is something that's going to come up every month. Right here is fixed business bills that come up once a year. So example, um, joining the board or your board fees. I don't know why I have networking group on here. Continuing ed every other year. All these different things. So, and then down here is variable stuff. You know what, up here under mobile phone, most of us, way, way back, your mobile phone changed every month depending on how much you used it. So that's why I've had it in both different categories. What's your, what's the average mobile phone bill right now? I think 75. 75? Yeah, that works. Okay. We'll use 80. We'll just say that's the same each month. So. We're going to get rid of this for the moment. Actually, no, we'll just use February. So February, all we've got in this column is our basic bills just to keep the business going. That's $240 a month before any dollars are made. So that's, this budget thing can kind of help you look at your whole year. Well, there's a 503, like we said. So this month it was 1100. Your CE every other year, so this is your basic cost just to keep the business running. That's, bring it ready to. And then down here are the variable ones, things that cost per transaction. But this will help you kind of get an idea on how much you have to have coming in each month. Then to make sure you're safe, this is a three month budget concern, or this is looking three months and a half. This is how much you should really have in the bank Actually, it should be six months. So on a, a year or a month where you're selling nothing, you still need about $1,400 in the bank to get through, through six months. And these numbers are kind of scary right now when no money's coming in. So you got to think about that. But this kind of gives you an idea on what you've got to do to put that in there. And that's one reason they say, you know, cut personal first. This is bare bones right here. This is just the minimum to get things going. Let's say you did have a closing though. Let's say in this month you had a closing and you pay a transaction. How many of you are in coaching? Everybody? Okay, so you don't have a transaction fee there, do you? Okay, so the minute you get one closing in, this on these expenses, here's where you put deposits. Let's say you sold something, you had a $4,000 check. Oh, you know what? I did these backwards because I didn't put negative. Minus 45. Minus 15. Yeah, the red makes it even hurt more. Minus 50. Minus 80. So if you sold something, got a check for 4,000, your balance that month is 3760. If you had two closings or income two, if you're doing a second job, let's say there's 1500 coming in. This will help you kind of see and project what's going on each month. But anyway, that's a whole side note, but this is a financial survival class I taught. Now, I started teaching it to college kids who would get out of school and they'd buy a computer or a car and they'd get that credit card and they were screwed because they couldn't buy a house now for four years because they bought things that were wrong. So I started teaching this to help them understand, look at your budget, learn how to live before you get into a bad situation there. So anyway, this, oh no, I just shut everything. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad Mike, you <laughs> Is there somewhere we can get a copy of that? I have something similar, but I like your format better. Yeah, I can just share it with everybody afterwards. Um, it's it's actually just uh, something I've used forever. Actually, it came from the music store because we did rentals. And so yeah. Our big rental month was uh, first two months of school year, August and September. We had to get enough money in those two months to make it the rest of the year. Because if you get the rentals in, people rent this for the rest of the year. And so that's kind of why the 12-month idea came about. I'm glad I didn't shut the Zoom down. I thought I'd lost you also, Lexi. All right, we'll log back in. That's a buyer coming in. <laughs> and I keep trying to change it because it's a little complicated right now. It needs some thinning down to make it make more sense. So Lexi, when I send it to you, feel free to make any changes you want on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, 
back to back to on schedule though. Turn on laser pointer, turn enter full screen. Now let's make sure not to shut everything down again. <laughs> so what they're going to do with this, it, it's it's a big mindset shift first. You've got to realize things are changing, and that's why we've got to get into that mindset of because uh, you're going to see a bunch of people right now. I've seen it already on Facebook. Spring market is here, and they're acting like nothing's different from last year. But if you see team meeting stats tomorrow, we are way different from last year. Um, number of listings is down. Number of uh, closed contracts. Everything is down except as a market center, we were more profitable because if we've already we've been cutting for six months getting ready for this. So market center wise, we've done everything we can to make sure we can help you all get through everything. But you're, have you seen those posts already? A friend of mine who used to be here went somewhere else. Spring market is back, and I know he's going to be spending money like crazy, and it's going to be trouble. We've been told the fourth quarter this year is going to be rough. That that's where you're going to see the big drastic change. In fact, ah, I keep shocking things today. Oh, here's our eraser. In our area, that one doesn't work. <laughs> These are not exact, but they're pretty darn close. Typically in Southwest Missouri, 20% of house sales start first quarter, 30% second quarter. That's right now, March, April, May, June. This is the busiest time of the year for the next three months. 27% is the next quarter, which is July, August, September. School starts back, it drops. So the next six months is crucial to get enough money. As a friend of mine said when I got in the business, gather your acorns because winter is coming. So you got to store enough up to get through the winter because it's going to go down to 23%. And then next January, February, March, we're down to 20% again. This is the cycle that's kind of proven over the past 10 years in our area. Because uh, some of you will think it's the same each quarter. It is not. So right now is the prime time. So keep doubling down on everything you're doing because this is when you got to get everything in that you can. Mike, what are those numbers? Real Say, what's that? What are those? What are those percentages or those numbers? I can't see them. Okay, uh, first quarter twenty percent. Uh huh. Second quarter thirty percent. Uh huh. Third twenty seven. And fourth twenty three. Okay. And that's pretty tried and true. Now everybody's business has different cycles, um, but that is kind of what we've seen as a general trend over the last many many years. I just want to compare it to our trends. Yeah, I'd be curious how it compares. So let me know what you find out on it. Okay. Okay. So in Keller Williams, there's a thing called the six personal perspectives. That's a whole class that's taught. And this is them. This is the things to make sure you're doing the right things. Commit to self-mastery. Commit to the 80-20 principle. Um, that is the idea that 80% of what you, 20% of the things you do account for 80% of your business. You got to decide what the most important things are. Move from E to P. That means going from an, being an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset to purposeful, following a system. Make being learning based the foundation of your action plan and remove your limiting beliefs. This thing that we're talking about right now is number six be accountable. So here's the difference between being accountable and not. Doesn't seek reality. Ignorance, ask no questions. Awareness, what's the situation? Finds reality. That's not the way it is. It's just like spring before. That's not how I see it. That's your perception. This is the way it is. Got it. I see what's going on. It's facing reality and saying, okay, we got to do something to get through here. Blames. If everybody would do their job, it's not my fault. It's yours. Why didn't you change something on the other way? If it is to be, it's up to me. What do I want? This is my responsibility. And we're all 1099 employees. We're working for ourselves. We've got to be, you know, nobody's going to make you go up, get up and go to work every day. You have to do it yourself. Personal excuses. It's not my job. I was never given a chance. It doesn't work here. Find solutions. What are my options? How can I get what I want? What can I do? Weights and hopes. It was meant to be. It will happen. Time will tell. It's out of my hands. Or let's get started. Time's up. Let's go. This is what I will do. 
you've got to be on the red side here. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to be taking care. This is your business. It is your livelihood. It is what you have to, to fund your personal and your business life. So you've got to go after it. I love this quote. It's from the shift book. You don't get to decide what the market will do, but you definitely get to decide what you will do. When I was at the other company over the last 10 years, every year we had stats to show what companies were growing. And Keller Williams did this through the declining market. Because KW was continuing growth-minded things instead of, um, you know, what, what do they call it? Uh, rounding up the wagons, circle the wagons, and just sort of, you know, get in the mindset of, of no growth. They took market share and it pissed us off where I was. It was like, KW's got to be doing something wrong or illegal. There's, there's something they're doing wrong. Actually, we're just doing things the right way and continuing to do it and continuing to stay in touch with people. So that's the mindset set of it. We have to realize there's a change coming. Of course, it's not a change for you three. It is what it is. What it is. This is what you know basically from when you've gotten in. Lexi, what do you see as a big change from the year years of experience for what's going on right now? Color objections, not understanding where the market truly is and understanding that the advantage that they're at right now. Oh, the, 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 the sellers have an advantage? Yeah, I definitely do feel like they, because with the less inventory, there's obviously, and there's a still a very high demand for it. But they're not seeing advantage. That's not what they're hearing in the news, though, is it? No, because it's not hyper local. Yeah. Um, let me admit, Tammy. Yeah, the good, good news doesn't sell. My brother's a TV guy. That is the truth. Every time they try to run a good news segment or something like that, it never gets attraction. People want to hear what's wrong. And so uh, a lot of media companies know we got to put the bad stuff out there. So it's slanted a little bit more to cause drama, to sell ads, but we've got to realize we're, we got to tell the story to our people. Okay, get right. And welcome, Tammy. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Which Tammy is this? Tammy Caudell Holt. Oh, goody. Glad to have you here. We had three different Tammy, so I wasn't sure I'm, which one. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> That's okay. We're just getting into the meat of it right now. Okay, so the number one determinant of surviving right now is expense management. You don't look at trying to grow your way out of it, although we keep doing that, but we'll cut every expense you can. So we're going to use a guy, and they got three steps here. Determine your margin, cut the fat, protect your margin. We're going to use a guy named Emilio as a case study. Um, let's see what it tells us what this is Emilio. He is a small immediate family and owns a dog. They run their business as a solo agent with no assistant. However, Emilio utilizes the services of a transaction coordinator. To find Emilio's margin, we must calculate their pipeline of business. This means we need to know what Emilio has in his transaction pipeline that will be closing soon to provide income. So Emilio's numbers look pretty good to me. So number one, we got to calculate what's coming in, then determine the expenses, and then find the margin. Margin, here's the best way I explain it. On a piece of paper, when you get one, there's a margin on the side. That is how much space you have before you run out. That's why I look at money margin, or even down here is better on the bottom. How much, how much is coming in to give me a buffer before I am falling off the paper? Money's the same way. How much do I have to have after the whole month's expenses to make sure that I'm still on the page and I can keep going forward? So this is Emilio, like I said, he's a solo agent with no assistant, he utilizes the transaction management service, he rents an office space in the market center, he has a small immediate family and he owns a dog. So we're gonna get into Emilio's numbers here. So what we gotta do first is calculate how many closings are in the pipeline for the next two months. What is the projected income from closed transactions? And what will be the average monthly income based on a 60 day projection? And like we said, we were looking at 30, 60, even six month. It's hard to do that um, when you don't have anything in the pipeline right now, but that's why it's important to get things going pretty quickly. Okay, Emilio's expenses. Um, his rent is $2,000. His utilities and telecom, I'm assuming that means like internet and um, all that stuff, $500. Maybe his phone's included there too. Healthcare, $1,000. Healthcare is incredibly stupid anymore. Groceries, $1,250. Insurance, $1,000. Entertainment, $1,000. Dining out, travel, wardrobe, the wardrobe cracks me up because <laughs> I would have trouble spending $500 a month on clothing. Um, I, so my old company, I was a suit and tie every day. 
So dry cleaning expenses was something I had on there. And I'm like, hey, t-shirts anymore. This is a cutting a cut right there. Child care seems extremely cheap to me because child care is insane right now. Transportation, dog walker, maid service. So Emilio's monthly personal expenses are $10,600. His office expenses, office rent, 500. Utilities, telecom, 200. Okay, most people anymore, these are combined. Like my phone is the same one I use for home and business. I write it off on the business side, but it's combined. And actually my phone and internet is combined. Um, and then I have that as an office expense because I have a home office and there's all kinds of formulas there. Technology, marketing, prospecting, salaries. I'm not sure what salaries are since he's alone, unless that's his uh, transaction coordinator. Accounting, transportation, quarterly income taxes. So 10,600 plus 4,850. Emilio is in the hole $15,000 every month before anything happens. Yeah. So, oh, 15,750. That was these two together. So his margin is $300. If he, uh, this is his projected income actually. This is so, he figured his pipeline in our area, if you had, the average house price is 244,000 this month. So an average commission on that would be what? 244, one, two, three times 0 0.03. Gross commission before splits or anything would be 7,300. That's basically two sales where that's sales of, uh, let me try this. Hey, hey. 15,000 of income is basically gross commission of selling $500,000 each month. So whether it's two 250 houses, one 150, one 500. But if he does that and takes off his personal expenses and his business expenses, he has a whopping $300 to go into savings or whatever else. That feels strangling to me. That is very hard to deal with, especially when eggs have gone up triple price. Gas is now, what, almost 330 a gallon again. So Emilio needs to cut the fat. Number one, personal expenses. Number two, business expenses. And I think in the stuff you got, they actually have some of these worksheets where you can work through your own things. Okay, so what you are supposed to do and what we need to do for Amelia is look at what things are in these three categories. Essential to have, nice to have, can live without. Let's see if they show his, we're gonna go back a few slides. Okay, so if we were looking at Emilio, what can we get rid of? Or famous, he could be cut down at least. I would think. I mean, it's time to start staying home watching Netflix. I'm dining out. A thousand, that's 250 a week. Well, unless it's one Taylor Swift ticket. <laughs> so, but I, so that's what I look at. I'd say, okay, it's, it's cut mode. Let's get, let's get this knocked down. And Dustin, you said dining out. Probably, yeah. Okay, here's another trip with dining out. If you do have to, uh, drinks are expensive and they're ridiculous. Um, a rule I once was told is if you will drink water at a restaurant instead of soda or whatever else, then technically every fourth meal is free. And that pretty well works out. I'm going to shut this door so we can hear. Keep it all shut. But the last place I had a soda was $3.30. I'm like, I used to buy a 12 pack of Mountain Dew for $2.99. So, and fast food is ridiculous. Hardee's, two or three dollar soda. So, try, if you go to just water, then basically every fourth meal would be free. So, that's a, an easy cut right there. Liquor at a bar or at a restaurant, insane. Get drunk at home alone. No, that's not good either. <laughs> but, but just look at those kind of things. Travel, um, that might need to be cut down. Wardrobe, definitely. Child care, I think that's grossly under. Um, in our area, transportation is not as big a thing as in some metro areas. So I think that could be a big change there. Dog walker, dogs and kids, they'll just ruin you financially. <laughs> no way around that. And I have several kids who've gotten dogs. I'm like, you realize, never mind, I can't, I can't solve that. Maid service, 600 a month. Holy crap. I don't know what they're having done to their house. But in other words, Emilio could cut some stuff pretty quick, couldn't he? Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Monthly business expenses, what could he cut? What does he need to get rid of? Maybe some of transportation. Transportation, yeah, I think in our area, this is not an accurate thing. Um, Lexi, what do you see on here that you think Emilio should cut if he was an agent with you? If he's truly committed, then he can cut that office space. He doesn't need it. He's a single agent. Exactly. Um, I would definitely look at the marketing and make sure of what the conversion was on it. Yeah. Um, a lot of times we're told, you know, if you if you do this and get one sale, it pays for itself. Well, if you do seven of those things, you got to sell seven things before you break even. Right. And so marketing, we get sold a lot of stuff. I love that we are called prospecting based, marketing enhanced. If you'll stay in touch with your people more, that is a lot more than marketing anyway. Okay, what, any other things, Lexi? Um, I'm not real sure why he, I mean, $250 a month for accounting. I mean, there's not a whole lot. He's a single agent. There's not a whole lot you really have to do. Right. Yeah, I would agree on that. I'd rather too. have somebody just teach me what I need to know and do it myself. Yeah. Or just be accurate and keep track of it either in Quicken, you know, cut that down to 50. I have a QuickBooks subscription. I think it's $55 a month. Everything goes into it. And at the end of the year, my accountant can log straight into it. So there's ways to keep track of that stuff or that Excel sheet, you know, do, do something, keep track of your expenses. Because if you're a workaholic in a job like this, most of your life's a tax deduction. Oh, that is another thing. If you go out to eat with somebody and you say, you know, I can always use a referral. Is that a business expense? I've been told it is. I do not give legal or tax advice, but I've been told that if you have a business conversation, and I'm at the Cardinals games, if I'm talking with somebody about business, I write it off. Of course, I'm sponsoring at the Cardinals, so that may be something I need to look at too. Okay, so me, for example, business expenses. I've been a part of something called KW Sports Plus Entertainment, $200 a month subscription. I canceled it this morning because I'm like, in a year and a half, I've gotten nothing out of it, except it's really cool to be part of that. I will see Facebook leads coming in saying, this major league pitcher needs a place for spring break or spring training. But have I gotten any business out of it? I have not. It's time to get realistic and say, it ain't working. So you got to look at all the different things. As realtors, we're sold all kinds of stuff. You know, get this app for your phone, get this. Um, oh, back on personal, check your subscriptions. How many of you have Hulu and Netflix and Disney Plus and this and that? I don't know, I just make friends that have accounts and just log on. <laughs> That's what I do. Or parents. I'm paying yeah. for all my kids to have their entertainment everywhere. But seriously, I think we forget how many subscriptions are there. And just do it. It's called a tech audit. Sit down sometime with that, the spreadsheet they have in the back of this and list everything for a month that you're having deducted and go, holy cow, look what I could save by not doing this. Or three of you get together, you get Hulu, you get Netflix, <laughs> and then you share with each other. Well, it's funny, though, because uh, we, we have YouTube TV. That's our main TV thing. And we have seven or eight kids on it. But we only pay for three screens at once. So on Chiefs games, you're watching, and all of a sudden, a thing comes up saying, too many screens, you're blocked off. And you're like, dang it. So then you got to get on and cut somebody else off. Of it. So, and I'm like, I'm going to pay for it. I get to have it. So, OK, so jump back to where we were. So go through your own stuff, make the list. Go, is it a sin? Do I have to have this? Well, you have to have a mortgage. Nice to have, it's personal dining, make it a treat thing. Don't do it every time. Um, where I worked before, two ladies in the office with us had basically Grubhub delivered every day. They were spending 15 to $20 per lunch every day. $20 times five, that's what? $100 a week, $400 for lunch. You know what? bring a bring a Tupperware, you know, mm -hmm. do something different. Um, find the ways you can cut things so that it makes sense. Okay, expense guidelines. This is on the work side. Does this expense generate a lead or close a transaction? If so, that's probably something to hang on to. Is this a must have, a nice to have, or can live without expense? KW Sports Plus Entertainment. It was nice to be part of that group, but you know what? I got to be realistic. It's not doing anything for me right now because we don't have that many sports and entertainment people coming into Springfield. So you got to look through those three columns. Must have, let me back it up. Essential to have, nice to have, can live without. And this is a personal budget thing where you got to look at it and then stick to it. A lot of this is just making yourself be responsible to it. 
<clears throat> okay, this, so they did it on business expenses too. Essential to have. Performing lead generation. Well, that's free for most of us, unless you're paying for a dial system or something like that. Coaching and training. I think that's essential because that helps you get to the next level on it. Nice to have office space. Lexi was dead on on that. Um, we have 438 agents here in Keller Williams. What, maybe 10% of them have offices. We got a tech area. You're meeting people at their houses. You can make it work. You can reserve a room up here. It's, we are set up to help people be frugal and make it. Um, can live without. What things can you cut within 48 hours, personal and business? When you look through things, vendor contracts, some of the bigger teams have like a, a partnership with something or even like a copier agreement, any of these type of things. Look at what you can cut immediately because the goal is to cut it so down the road you can have these things back again. The big thing is we're trying to get to where there's enough margin coming in to give you the balance to get through, as we said, when winter comes or the slow months. The real estate budget is the only way to protect your margin. And I'm sitting page behind, let me jump over here. So we've already done the part, they want us to redo Emilio's budget. Two budget mindset principles though. Invest, don't spend. Think of what you spend as investments. If, it, if you look at it that way, you will stop spending on stupid stuff. Um, so just every time you're getting ready to put, pull out the credit card or get the cash out, does anybody use cash anymore? Probably not. You got some, okay. Um, decide if it's if it's worth it. Is it going to, is it something that will make more money for you? That's what an investment is. It's something you're putting money into that will get money back out for you. It's about opportunity with your expenses, not obligation. And then number two, practice accountability, not accounting. Don't think of accounting as an obligation. Use your budget to hold yourself accountable. <clears throat> Have any of you ever heard of the envelope system? Most everybody has. That's a Dave Ramsey philosophy. It's been a lot of different places, but every month you say, okay, here's $200 for um, groceries. Here's this for fuel. Here's this. When that envelope is, and he used to say, put it in cash. Most people are on debit cards or, and actually credit cards are a whole other story. But once you spend that much for the month, you're done. So if you, you know, if you go really large the first two weeks, it might be rice and beans for the next two weeks of the month. But you got to hold yourself accountable because you're trying to get to somewhere else. Um, another thing, credit cards, got to be careful with them. Now, I actually, every bill I have for my business runs through this one because that's my Allegiant card, which gives me Allegiant fly miles. But I pay it off two or three times a month. I do not let it sit to the end because I don't want to miss a, a date and have fees. Um, the average person, no, 20% of people in America, I think right now have 8,000 credit card debt or more. So once you get into it, you're stuck. You got it. You know, I use it as a revolving thing because I'm earning points. All my business stuff goes on to Allegiant. All my personal bills that I can go on to Disney. So I get Disney dollars. So when you see me going to Disney all the time, it ain't because I'm spending the money. I've got points built up to make it smart. But if you do use a credit card, use one that will make sense. Um, some of them charge up to a $200 yearly fee. Don't do those. Get something that makes sense and works for you and pay it off at least every month, maybe more. But the minute you miss one, that interest just screws up everything you tried to save on it. Common budgeting traps, spending more than you make. That's where the credit cards come in. Spending all you make. Our goal is to get that margin bigger and bigger at the bottom of the paper. We want to have what you spend to stop here and a huge gap of money to start putting in there because you really need to have about six months of savings in the bank. So you got to look at what your normal month's costs are, multiply times six and get that. So they have re-imagined Emilio's business and we're supposed to do a, oops. Back. So we, are, we kind of did that without actually putting on a spreadsheet, but we knocked off several of his personal expenses, several of his business expenses that would make his margin bigger. But it feels claustrophobic and choking when you know at the end of the month you've done all this stuff, you've made $15,750 and you got $300 to show for it. That is exhausting and mind numbing. So you want to try and get your expenses cut down as much as possible. But at the same time, right now, like we said, these two quarters, this is the main time. So jump into everything you can do, open houses, um, the callings, get, get everything you can going because you, winter's coming. KW's mission is to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. 
You notice on here, only two of those red words deal with money or with business. The lives worth living, experiences worth giving, legacies worth leaving comes from having a margin built up and building a life for you outside of just working. We, our goal is to not have anybody in here have a job. A job is where you're coming in and you're working for a paycheck. We want you to have a career and a business where it starts funding the other three things on there for you. Okay, so on the margining and the business stuff, what ahas do we have? And Tammy, I think you were here for that whole section, weren't you? So what, what things have you seen that you think are important? Not just Tammy, anybody, but. Really look deep into where you're spending your money in. Don't just, you know, have a budget. One of my worst things, I drive two miles to work every day. Instead of getting breakfast at home, I really like going to come and go, getting a Diet Mountain Dew, and when they're bacon egg scramble rollers. That is $5 a morning. And I got to stop doing that because it's stupid. Number one, it's unhealthy. Number two, it's $5 times 30 days a month. Well, not 30 days, but you, you got to look at the little things. You, when you go through the grocery store, you got all that little candy stuff, you know, and all the, the, the impulse buys right at the register. Why? Because you're like, ah, it's just one thing. That one thing over and over adds up. Anything else from internet world? Nope, just like the tools that you're that you used earlier, so that you can be, uh, you can really track where you're at throughout the year. Yeah, you, So I was, I don't have it here. I I have a three ring binder of bills from home. I treat my home like a business. I try and track everything and keep track of it all. Because um, one year I did a budget, and I looked at, you know, well, I, I use Quicken for home, QuickBooks for business. I don't know why I do the two different. It just helped me mindset wise to keep them separated. But I ran a report and saw how much I'd spend on eating out that year. I'm like, holy crap. That could have been I don't want to know. Far. I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Okay. And then I do the same mindset thing. I'm like, well, I'm, uh, it's a business, didn't it? Business, it's a business lunch so I can count it, you know, it's still money out. I'm still spending money I shouldn't be spending. And so mm -hmm. we all just got to be real with ourselves and say, is it worth doing that? Or is it worth saving it for something? Um, instant gratification versus delayed gratification. The delayed is so much better, but we don't do it. Okay, next unit. Oh, that is it. I told you it could be right at an hour, a little bit short. <coughs> Let's see what else they have on here. Success happens. Okay, this is some stuff that says uh, main things to do as you get out of here, create an action plan. And I, like I said, you should have a spreadsheet or a checklist at the back of the packet that Haley sent out to you. Use that. I will share my budget with you all too. Actually, the one I'm going to share, I'll show you once we get on these slides. Other things that I want you to do, keep track of your transaction pipeline. Number one, those of you who are brand new, we've got to get transactions coming in. That's the first thing to get money coming in so you can um, pay for the expenses. And like I said, ALC meeting tomorrow, there might be something that will help newer people. So we're trying to get that approved tomorrow. Track your expenses regularly. You know how much you can save on taxes if you'll just uh, keep track of what you've spent? Um, government doesn't believe you unless you prove it. So keep track of everything. Come up with a system. I can show you my notebook sometime up in my office, but... Everything that I can gets, um, what was it the other day? Somebody laughed at me because I, I was somewhere I bought something for $2 and I got the receipt because I'm, I'm tracking everything. Uh, my yard guy, you know, when they treat the yard, everything goes in, it's categorized so I can see what I'm doing with it. Number three, accountable <laughs> for a return on investment. Is the stuff you're spending on making you money back or is it just frivolous? And most important, sticking to a budget. Decide what your monthly budget is and then stay there or make it a game, try to beat it. See how big you can, can win by being under. Um, let me see what it says on these. Prior, prioritize the skills you want to hone by looking at how you rated your effectiveness in each area. So it says you should rate each of these and then decide how you want to, which ones you want to hit first. I think they're all the same. I mean, we, you just got to do it all. It, it sucks, it's time consuming, but once you get a system going, it's actually pretty easy. It doesn't have to be big to start. And they would like you to evaluate me, we're not gonna do that. 
Summary, the key to remarging and changing your budget is changing the way you think. Challenge everything and make nothing sacred. Find, uh, unless you believe in tithing, then I say never stop that because God can do more with 90% than you can do with 100%. But that's my philosophy on that. Amen. <laughs> See, it's from the heavens also. <laughs> <laughs> Find your margin fast. Figure out how much you've got to have to make it. Protect your profit and prepare for the market ahead, which right here, you got six months that it's going to be good and then it gets slower every year. It's first seven or eight years, every time it was drop off, like, oh my gosh, market's dying. It comes back every season. It just, it won't be as big this year as the last year. So project your income based on your market, examine your expenses to identify areas to cut. Same three things over and over, protect your market. And then tomorrow or Wednesday, yeah. start with do more with less. That's the third evaluation thing. They think I'm doing a terrible job on this thing. Okay. Um, I'm jumping gears. I'm going to show you if I can find this. Okay, see how stupid I am with filing? That's file my leadership stuff. That's my vacation rental. Then under every one of these, there's files. Then there's files under files. And then there's more files. That's <laughs> the way I do my receipts also. Everything has a category so I can find where I'm going with stuff. Okay, coaching and education. Financial coaching, here's where I taught it for colleges, here's where I taught this. This is the one I'll share with everybody if I can find it. Realtor 12 month budget plan. This has three things on it. This is the thinned out version. Oh, that might not be the right one. Let me pull this again. There she is. Okay, so that's the big one with fixed bills, fixed annual bills, variable monthly bills. So I would do this and keep track for a year and that helps you budget for the next year. So this one right here is the 12 month budget planner. This is another one I was working on. So you would kind of get a duplicate of it. Here's my escrow sheet. And I'll show you that in a second. Oh, get out of the way. Oh, and that's really screwed itself up. I go from Excel to Google Sheets and it doesn't like each other sometimes. Okay, my escrow sheet. So once you, let's say you have a closing coming. Expect a close date. Let's say there's something for 430. Uh, MLS number. I put that in for a tracking reason later on. Name, bill buyer, address, whatever house he's buying. Main, main treat? Springfield. Mm -hmm. Sales price, 200. Okay, let me get rid of that for the moment. So I have this set with a split rate of, where is it? Oh, it's right there. This is an 80% split. I know we have different types of splits in here, franchise or royalty fee. And then I automatically put taxes 30% away, tie 10% and then MGS is what we call making God smile. That's extra money we used to do something fun like um, like maybe donate to Springfield Cares to help with a red day, that kind of stuff. So let's say it's $200,000, that'd be $6,000 commission, correct? Mm -hmm. This automatically knows how much goes to KW Local, KW Franchise, how much I should put into savings, how much I should put away for savings for tithe and how much for this. So my net, if I make 6,000, I know I have $2,442 $2, to spend. Okay, if I'm getting a transaction fee or if I'm paying one, nope, that's another thing I'm working on. Don't ignore that line for right now. Let's say Fred Seller is selling a house on Hiawatha. I don't know why. It's in Springfield. It's a $400,000 one. That would be 12,000. Okay. How much goes into my split? How much into the franchise and the royalty fee? How much to save for taxes? All this other. Look, right here, it tells me how much I should have coming in for the month. It shows the whole gross that's coming in, how much is getting saved away for taxes, and how much I have. You'll notice I got three solid lines here. January, February, March. Then April, May, June. Then July. So this is my quarterly lookout. So I can kind of, this is my pipeline. 
so I know how much is coming in. So if, if I have a month, for example, my April, I have nothing selling. So I have zero coming in here. That means I have to figure out, okay, did I save enough from last month to get through this? I did. Let's put those back in. But if you are in a different split amount, you can change the formula in here. See right here, you can change the formulas and I can help with that. And then once I cap, then I just zero this. So let's say I was capped this month. Shit. I put a zero in there. Now I am going to Okay, but I'm going to share this whole thing with you all. So I have the 12 month budget, escrow sheet, the economic model. I got to find a better way to do that because this will show you how much you need to do to get certain dollar amounts in. But this is part of the class I teach where we go through all the different numbers. So right now, let's just do this. No, I'll, wait, I'll get your emails and I'll put it in. Everybody, do the, if you want this, send me an email to mikebrown417 at kw.com. I can cut and paste your email and share it all. But the secret is keeping track. If you don't know what you're doing, you're just guessing every day, and then you never know if you're making progress or not. And I think if we go back to here, yeah, we've hit the end of it. So. Any questions or thoughts on remargining from the interworld or the, the virtual or unvirtual people? No questions. Okay, I would suggest coming to team meeting tomorrow. We're going through all the numbers of lore, which is the language of real estate, and we're going through the awards and honors last month. Um, so it's going to be a, a lot tomorrow. And then ALC is at eight if you want to come and see what ALC does. But that'll be in here, and then we'll go on to the, the team meeting. Those of you online, thanks for joining us. Um, this is being uh, recorded, so if anybody else needs to see it again, although I don't know why they'd want to, it's not the, <laughs> it's not, it's not like it's uh, a slick, polished production. But um, thank, you. Lex, thank you, Lex and Tammy. Thanks for being there. All of you here, thanks. And go sell something so we have some pipeline to get marching. <laughs> thanks, Mike. I will right, we'll see you. Bye. Yeah, leave meeting.